าการุเลงาภาษางตีอีดอยเสงสามสิจูน้ำขามันเด้ Mung Mao in Yunnan, a young ambitious prince embarks on a journey, braving the elements into a new land and lays the foundations for a glorious kingdom of stunning achievements. Navigating the tumultuous river over the Batgai Hills, Sukafa enters m u n d u n s u n g k a m Present-day Assam in 1228 AD. This marks a pivotal moment in Ahom and a broader Assamese history: the birth of the magnificent Ahom Kingdom. A practice of prophesying and forecasting the future is prevalent among the Ahoms. Moluns assume the role of soothsayers. The Bansag manuscript is used for the purpose of predicting outcomes of everyday decisions and events, including marriage, matters related to warfare, administrative and royal decisions and events. Psalms and incantations are recited in their own distinctive ways, which has a tonal, almost musical aspect to it. A noteworthy facet of the Ahom society is women empowerment. As evident throughout history, Ahom women have held equal footing with men. Social evils like child marriage and dowry does not exist. Widow remarriage is practiced among the Ahoms and is not considered socially unacceptable or discriminatory. Even women who were royal by marriage ascended the throne and reigned over the kingdom. The king's mother Rajmal held a special position in the royal court. And took administrative decisions independent of the king. Significant efforts are being made to conserve this ancient culture well into the present day. Establishments such as the Institute of Thai Studies and Research and various Thai language schools are paramount in this regard. We have documented more than 2,000 Thai manuscripts and collected from surrounding villages, particularly Upper Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. And now we have been uh, preserving those using some scientific techniques. For the sake of preservation, we have also publishing some Thai manuscript with translation into Assamese and English. We have published a number of. Um, Uh, rare Thai manuscript, and more importantly, we have also been publishing two journals, and one in English and another is Assamese. English is Indian Journal of Thai Study, and Assamese is Bulapulansis. And we have till now published the 28 issues of the Indian Journal of Thai Study. We have also been continuously organizing a number of. Uh, national seminars and workshops, and these are being particularly funded by Indian Council of Social Science Research, Indian Council of Historical Research, uh, and also uh, some other funding agencies. When we talk of conservation, then we do mean that uh, these manuscripts are being cleaned and through scientific devices, and they are being kept in a box. And that box is now uh, constructed, and also it is framed with a particular special paper, which is called acid-free paper. And this paper is not locally available. We used to procure from the city. The Ahom language belongs to the southwestern Thai or Kradai language family, closely related to Khamdi, Aiton, and Shan, and distantly related to Thai. Is relatively free of non-Khmer and Indo-Aryan influences. It has a written history dating back to the 13th century.
With the passage of time, as the Ahoms assimilated more with the local populace of Assam, the use of the Thai language reduced drastically between the 18th and the 19th centuries. People from the Sangbung, Moklong, and Mohun clans were the only Thai speakers left with varying degrees of proficiency. Owing to current Thai Ahom conservationist movements and efforts, people are reclaiming their culture and heritage, and with it, the language is experiencing a rebirth. The language has now also been added to the list of Unicode languages. The Thai language has had a major impact on Assamese. Several Thai and Thai-derived words such as Duk, Rap, Riha, Bisoni, Kotora, Ked, Dhe, Um, Dangoria, and many more are part of the Assamese lexicon. Reverence towards ancestors is the most significant aspect of the Thai Ahom cultural philosophy. Jasingpa are regarded as the ancestors from whom all knowledge of culture, nature, and the world flows through generations, and an eponymous ritual is performed in their honor. <laughs> The life of the people revolves around their rich agroecological surroundings. Rice cultivation is the predominant occupation. Constructing irrigation channels to supply rice paddies with water during dry seasons is a characteristic feature of the local farming methods. Owing to the Brahmaputra and his various tributaries, fishing is another major occupation. The irrigation channels in the fields are also abundant with fish, and fishing in these channels with traditional tools such as jako, kalo, juluki, and polo is a sport-like activity for the people. Autumn is a season for crop harvesting and rice threshing. Harvesting is followed by almost a month-long grand festivities of Poikin Unbao, also known as Nokwa. Families invite each other over lunches and dinners and community buffets are organized. Traditional rice beer, known as Luklao, is prepared during this time and is an important part of the festivities. Offerings of chicken, rice, and various ingredients, along with portions of beetle leaf, areca nut, and lukla, are presented on raised platforms called Maihan in reverence of ancestors in a ritual called Dampi or Grihodam. Following Dampi, the merriments of Poikin and Mao begin. Chicken, pork, fish, duck, eel, crab, grasshopper, weaver ant eggs, silkworm are some of the common ingredients of this ethnic cuisine. Smoking, barbecuing, and boiling are the most common methods of food preparation. This marks the beginning of the Tayahun New Year. Sericulture is another important activity for the people. Ornate silk garments are an intrinsic part of the Thai Ahom and Assamese identity. Pat, Muga and Eri silk are primarily used to weave such garments. Muga silkworm is reared on Sum tree plantations known as Sumoni or Huadu 
and dikloti trees, while airy silkworm is reared on fragrant aralia or keseru trees and bat silkworm on mulberry or nuni plantation. Traditional garments such as riha, mekhala, and selang are made from bat silk. Muga is used for surya sula, riha, and mekhala, and eri for selang, sokotia, and khatkotia. These silk garments are of exceptional quality, last for several generations, and are an inseparable characteristic of the culture and its festivities. The Yahum cultural philosophy lacks the concept of deities, but revolves around the reverence of ancestors, both human and the natural elements. It is believed that human life cannot manifest without the prior existence of nature. In the past, people venerated the air elemental Lailungkam or Langku through various rituals, songs, and dances that they performed in fields and other open spaces. An amalgamation of these practices in the wake of Neo Ahom cultural restoration took the form of the Lailungkam dance. The Soklong wedding ritual stands out as a uniquely Ahom practice. The bride and groom take their vows before the moral, an ornate altar decorated with 101 earthen lamps. The moral symbolizes the cosmos while the lamps represent celestial bodies. The ceremony is performed by Mulung and his associates in the presence of family elders. The bride offers hang down a double-edged sword to the groom, addressing him to subdue his enemies, look after the family and work for the welfare of the country. The bride and groom then play a game where they hide their rings in a bowl of rice and exchange them once found. Erica nuts and beetle leaves compounded into the term tamulpan hold great significance in Ahum and Assamese tradition. Every household tends to have groves of Erica palm and beetle vine, supported by the alluvial soil and temperate climatic conditions of the region. From rituals and ceremonies to weddings, invitations, greeting guests, festivals, and any occasion include tamulpan offerings. Recreational chewing of Tamil ban is a common sight in Assam. As a festival, a song and dance form, and a folk identity of Assam, Bihu bears influences of the ancient Tahoms. Bihu, as we know it today, is a synthesis of various ethno-cultural elements and intimately connected with the harvesting cycle of crops. Originating as an indigenous festival among the Sutia, Sunwal Kosari, Tengal Kosari, Moran, Deuri, Motok, Boro, Rabha, Dimasa, and Tiwa, it was later influenced by the Ahoms since it bore resemblance 
to the ancestral Poisam Yam ritual of their homeland. Bihu celebrations along with songs and dance include various activities such as making pita, a type of rice cake cooked with brown rice batter and usually mixed with jaggery, ground coconuts or roasted sesame seeds, while traditional games such as egg fight are relished by the young and old alike. Following the rituals of Boykin Unmal, elders sit around a bonfire and sing songs, pondering on the Ahun cosmogony philosophy in a call and response manner known as Don Postula. <laughs> Mahahunna jitiya horomondala te ma jimu bomi fimi sangsakun lala seu plauli ko ahi se je mahabindu ata sisti hoy sila oti pagiting bhabe he mahabindu te sisti hobo ko ako hokol sisti hota haboti loya sile he haboti loy thakas sisti hota tu eta hamoy porikhor bahi jaonte jaonte bispon ghoti mahakakhte mahahunna te bute ekhon dyapto hoy gul ar he dyapto hoy juar pisot ako Horomondal Sisti Hobolo Kotakutikal Lagile, He Kotabu, Bigyan, Bigyani Hokole, Big Bang Theory, Quantum Tot, Bosso, Sontai Hoi, Hisabetan Loke, Hisab de Boparise, Kinto Amat, I Hokolo, Zibilagami, Puralong, Penkeka, Uncomong, Lai Comong, Kenlong, E Putti Vilagot, He to Mane, Istor Vilago, Gotahe, Rupok Hormitae, Biborn Korise. Pogitate, I have a lot of damn horror, say, damn horror, Saipu, Zibito Zonok, Zonova, Lehok, or Saipu, Gihodam Bulikaho, Saipu, Cock, that Topon Krahoi, Ponsum Puko, Teopu, Holy Nopu, Cock, Topon Krahoi, our Sudopu, Udova, Mononoka, Kaluk, Ziman, Holopu, Hase, He Hokolok, Ami Safi Dam Hisabe, Mahapokiti, Hokti Homo Holovot, Madame Mofiano Sonot, Topon Guru. I am going to rent a house and 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 The Ahoms bury their dead in burial mounds or chimulai called Mundang. The concepts of afterlife, heaven and hell are not part of the Ahom philosophy. They believe in the here and the now, that after we are gone our physical form breaks down and the elements that make us go back into the earth to become one with nature and the cycle of life continues, much like a silkworm going through metamorphosis in a cocoon. Ancient kings, nobles, and warriors were enshrined in colossal moidams, along with their important belongings and various treasures. Moidams of the nobility are located near Soraidil, the first capital and the symbolic center of the Ahom kingdom. The moidam of the great general Lassit Borfukon is located at Holongapar, Guhaigao, in Jurhat district. A set of Moidans known as the Seven Brothers Moidan is located in Bedbury in Subsago district. The ancient Moidans have now become tourist attractions and are protected sites under the Archaeological Survey of India and the state government of Assam. Ahom Moidans are similar to the Chinese burial mounds in the Guangzong Plains or the Royal Mounds of Gamla Uppsala in Sweden.
Madame Mephi is the most important community festival among the Ahoms. Madame Mephi literally means offerings to ancestors. The ancient Ahoms performed the ritual during various occasions, events, and times of the year. Nowadays, it has become an annual festival, and 31st of January has been ascertained as the date of celebration. On the day of Madame Mephi, people revere the pantheon of Ahom ancestors and elementals, such as Kaukam, the water elemental, Ailengbin, the earth elemental, Jan Saihung, energy of the natural world, Langdon, the first ancestor, Sitlam Sam, presiding Newman of seven powers, Mutkum Taikum, sun and moon elementals, Jasingpa, the wise forefathers, Dampi, the forefathers beyond the 13th generation, and Rakin Bakin, negative elementals causing ailments of the body and mind. The essence of Madame Mephi is centered around the idea of social solidarity, peace and prosperity among all people, regardless of various creeds. Like their mythical insignia, Ni Ngao Kham, soaring across the landscape, carrying the memories of all the generations of ancestors, the ancient Ahoms have left a deep impression on the history, culture, and life of the sun. Under Sukafa, the Ahoms made a new home here. Spanning 600 years, it was one of the oldest reigning dynasties in the region. Ahom architectural marvels such as Ronghor, Karenghor, Toladolghor, and Noidans still stand today as testaments of this great dynasty. The Ahoms assimilated with the indigenous people in the truest sense and laid the foundation of a unified multicultural demography. Oh, now.